A lot of us loves to read. I do. I've kind of built the whole show around it. However, we can consume more books if they were in audio form. But for some authors, the cost of producing an audiobook is just too great. But what if there is another solution than the normal ones that we know that is known as Audible? Join me as I talk with author and extraordinary person Becky Parker Geist on this episode of True Crime, Authors and Extraordinary People. Welcome to True Crime, Authors and Extraordinary People, the podcast where we bring two passions together, the show that gives new meaning to the old adage, truth is stranger than fiction, and reminding you that there is an extraordinary person in all of us. Here is your host, David McClam. What's going on, everybody? And welcome to the episode of True Crime, Authors and Extraordinary People. Of course, I am your man, David McClam. Hey, if you guys haven't already, make sure you follow us on all of our social medias. One link to a link tree will get you to every link you need to have pertaining to the show. All right, so again, I always have this knack. The person I have can't come under two bills. We're putting up under extraordinary people. I'm sure we'll have her back because she's also an author. So let me tell you about who our guest is. She is the founder and CEO of Pro Audio Voices, which is a Portland-based company serving clients internationally as a go-to place for exceptional audio book production and marketing and producer of the soon-to-be released Amplify app which will offer the highest royalties and most control to authors of audiobooks of any platform in the industry. Her debut novel, The Left Turn, which is the first in the Split Universe series, explores self-discovery and discoveries in new science through contemporary metaphysical fiction in the context of parallel universes. She is the author of The Left Turn and CEO of Pro Audio Voices. Please welcome Becky Parker Geis. Becky, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you so much. Really glad to be here. And uh, just a, a quick update on that. Uh, the soon-to-be-released Amplify audiobooks is fully live. So we can talk more about that. Even better. Even better. So, well, I'm glad to have you here. This is an honor. I do know, you know, your Amplify app, was we talk about, it does, it does go against the big giant. You know, Amazon has claimed to be one of the biggest audiobook publishers. I have heard a lot of complaints, though, about their royalties and things of that nature. So I'm glad that we can have you here today and maybe we can get some of those authors over to your app. Yeah, yeah. Bigger doesn't necessarily mean better. (laughs) (laughs) This is true. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So my first question, I did read some things about you. You know, you know a a little bit about AI as well. Uh, So I'm wondering, what do you think about AI in movies and in podcasting? As you know, we're having a Hollywood strike right now. And one of that big part of that is because they're afraid of what AI will do to them in their career going forward. They want assurances that they're going to be protected. And I have some tools that I use in podcasting around AI. What's your thoughts about that? Yeah, well, I, you know, I think that there, there are places for AI and it can be useful as a tool in many contexts, but narration, I don't think is one of them. I think that is a very human to human experience. And, you know, so if we just like focus for a moment just on the narration piece, I come from the perspective, I was like, I think we are story. I mean, that's how we experience our lives. Someone asks you how you are, you start telling them a story, right? Right. And we really have if we think about, well, who am I? We start a narrative in our heads about who we are. So I really think think that it's so central, so core to our very human experience. And that audiobooks, the, the, the telling of stories is really in the domain of the human and doesn't belong. Uh, you know, we don't we shouldn't be having, in my opinion, AI taking that over. I recognize that People are, you know, businesses want to save money, so they want to, you know, save on voiceover or wherever they can. I also feel like, well, there are so many good places for AI. Maybe we could use AI just in the places where 
we as humans, you know, where that's not where we uh, have our greatest gifts. Like, why would we turn our creativity going to act? It's not truly creative in in the true meaning of that word. It's uh, assembling, pulling together many pieces of things that have already been created by other people and, and reconfiguring them. So I feel like putting them in the place of the artists and the narrator and the, that creativity of humans is not its place. Like our work at Pro Audio Voices and Amplify Audiobooks, we are committed to human-centric. You know, if you're going to do, uh, you know, proofreading, that's a, that's a great place for AI to participate. Not be the entire thing, but to participate. It's a good tool in that way. It's just like with using a hammer, right? You're going to find the right place for the to use that tool, and it's not everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad we bring that up because uh, in podcasting now, I just went to a convention, and they're talking about AI. And one of the things is because one of the two of the biggest things in podcasting that costs us time is editing and what we call copywriting. So that's all of our show notes, titles, and all that. The system that I use, though, is authentic to me. What I mean by that is I have to actually upload a file of my podcast and it takes from what I'm saying and just create show notes. Yeah, I put that against chat GBT and I'm like, this don't sound nothing like <laughs> I would do. So if you're going to use something like that, I think you should use I use podium because it's what they do. So it's actually my words. It just does a better job of me of formulating what I need to formulate. Yeah. And, and I think that's a good that's a good use of it because it's not trying to pretend that it's creating something it is actually converting your words into text that makes sense to me right yeah so let's get to one of the big questions i hope all my authors are listening i've talked to some of my authors about audiobooks uh, i've heard things like i really want to but there's price i have told them what i feel as a podcaster and a reader what I feel about them having an audiobook. A lot of people consume these books in their cars, like podcasts. Right. Why should every author have an audiobook produced? Yeah, because, you know, a lot of your audience is only listening to audiobooks. It's a way that, you know, like once you get started listening to audiobooks, it is like, it's like an addiction. You know, you just, they're so great. And people can consume actually a lot more books that way by listening because, you know, you're doing other things or, you know, it just gives you a lot more opportunity. If you want to reach your widest audience, then you should have an audiobook. Um, that's that's the biggest reason. You know, there's another thing, too, is and this is even more true for some books than for others. Audiobooks are a very intimate experience. You know, as our podcast, most people are listening through their headphones, earbuds, you know, we're right in the head, right between the ears, right, of our listeners. So for many books, that really enhances the experience of that storytelling. It's very, it becomes much more personal and intimate. And if your story is the kind where you want that kind of intimacy, that, that really tight connection with your listener, yeah, audiobooks are a great way to go. Now, as you probably know, there's over 1 million podcasts consumed daily. Yeah. Do you think that audiobooks will make it to that number eventually? I do. I do. And, uh, you know, I think both industries are just booming and are going to keep going because, uh, you know, there's so many people that that want, that are, are eager for the content. You know, and we want more content as listeners. And really uh, there are still so many people that haven't haven't uh, really jumped on board yet uh, and that's just because they haven't experienced it but, you know I've talked with a, f a few people who have said oh well I, I, I can't do that but it's usually because you know they have hearing aids that are a particular you know cause a technical problem with that but the actual desire to hear content is very high and kind of voracious so <laughs> well let, let me tell you somebody has been in book clubs and if the listeners have never done this uh some book clubs has like so many books you have to read a month 
And in our discussion is there's a lot of us that's saying, does any of these books have an audio book? If we've got to read one book, we can read this book, but at the same time, we can listen to this book on the way to work in an audio book. One of the feedbacks that I have gotten back is, well, I would do audio books sometimes, but some of the audio books I get is just boring. What is your thoughts on a, a producing an engaging audio book that someone wants to listen to? Yeah, yeah. Well, that can be an issue. I, and, you know, when I'm searching for content, I am also, I reject a lot because I don't think that it's well narrated. You know, just as with books, there is some filtering that has to happen because not every audiobook is narrated well. And, and you know, even just coming back to the AI question, uh, one of the big arguments that uh, Book Baby made when they announced, oh, now we are partnering with Speech Key and we're going to do AI audiobooks. W- one of their arguments was, well, uh, an AI audiobook is as even better than some of the narrated books out there. In some ways, you know, I can't really fully argue with that because there are books that are poorly narrated. But here's the thing, as what that really is demonstrating to us is that the whole audiobook narration voiceover, that it's a set of skills. It takes it takes training, it takes, you know, experience to really develop those skills well. And there are lots and lots of really great narrators. So it's not like it's, uh, you know, this little tiny, tiny group. There are lots of them. But there are as many uh, that would like to be doing or uh, and are doing audiobook narration and and probably shouldn't be or just need to develop their skills a little more. You know, we could say the same thing about book publishing. You know, not every uh, published book, especially indie published books. Um, and I am a big fan of indie publishing. So uh, nothing ag- at all against that. But it takes, you know, the commitment to editing and proofing and, you know, and really putting in the effort and the time and the the quality that your content deserves. I hope I addressed that question. Uh, if not. <laughs> no, 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 that was that was perfect. That leads me right into my next one. OK, which is um, I have wanted to do audiobooks. I've done a few tests. I've been told, oh, your voice is great. I'm one of those people that I throw my whole self into it. So I want the audience to feel like what I'm feeling, right? So yes. if somebody dies, I want you to feel that in the inflection of my voice. Doing podcasting for five and a half years. If you listen to any of my episodes I do by myself, you will hear that, you know, when, when I'm in an exciting spot, you can tell what's really going on. Is there an easy way for someone that wants to become a narrator to become one? Because Amazon does not make that very easy at all to do. Yeah. You know, there's a place for Amazon, too, but um, it's not my it's not where I would direct people. I would say that the best thing you can do if you want to be a narrator and you you don't have any of that experience or training yet. Well, first of all, there are many people out there who do provide good coaching, uh, and that is a helpful thing for you if you if you don't have anything in that realm. And, And then the other thing is read aloud frequently. Now, if you have kids, that's easy. Read them bedtime stories. Read whatever you can. Read aloud a lot because that just that experience itself, even if it's just yourself, will help you. It does. It does take some time and listen to audiobooks because you'll start to get the feel of how a great story is told, how it's crafted. Because it's not just saying words into a microphone, and that's where you know I think. I think a lot of authors have the idea that that's what it is. Oh, I can narrate my own because I can sit in front of a microphone and read my own story. And the truth is that it's so much more than that. And they don't realize it. And so uh, this is where many of the author narrated projects uh, kind of fall short because they may be great writers, but they haven't developed the skills yet for audiobook narration. It takes stamina. It takes specific skills in terms of how you craft a sentence, where you pause, how you build it up, how you connect with it, like you were just talking about, with where you, that emotional connection. 
that is so powerful. And it's not just happening in the mind. Many authors will think, well, I had that experience and, and I'm thinking about it. Conveying that feeling, the feeling of excitement, of, of tension, they, it's a different performing it than it is writing it or just thinking about it. It's that heart connection. Well, I'm glad you brought up about reading out loud because I do all the time because I want to narrate books, but also it helps me with my podcast when I'm doing that. And sometimes my kids are like, Dad, you're back here by yourself. Why are you reading out loud? Why are you talking to an audience? But like, I'm practicing. So this is how you learn, you know, how to inflect <laughs> and what to do. So yeah. I'll play that clip back for them. Say, see, she does this for a living. Here she said I should read out loud. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Now, I don't know if they all do. I think some of them just get the book and they scan over it. Do you feel that a narrator should read the entire book all the way through before they decide to narrate the book? Before they decide to narrate it? Well, okay, so if we're talking about that actual decision about whether to do it, that's going to, you know, you sometimes can get surprised by content partway through. You may say yes to a project and then you read it and then you go, oh, it gets kind of, there's a lot of graphic violence in here that I'm not comfortable with. And then you have to back out of an agreement that you made, potentially, or do something that feels really uncomfortable for you. But in terms of the preparation of the work, it is most wise, it is generally best, it is, well, actually, it's always best to read the work in advance, because you learn so much about the characters. And, you know, a lot of times authors will put in some uh, twist at the end that, you know, totally changes your take on a character's motivations or um, maybe an accent. You know, there's a, there's a classic story about, you know, the, the narrator who reads through a whole story and then gets to the end and finds out the main character is uh, they refer to this Irish brogue and they go, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> redo the whole thing. <laughs> so, yes, read it beforehand. <laughs> All right. So now that it's out, can you tell us about the Amplify app? Yes. I'm curious to know about this new app you got. Yes. Amplify audiobooks. This is a dream come true for me. I've I've wanted something like this for many, many years, like really since I started working with authors, because I realized that you know, we get our content out there, our audiobooks out there into the world, and we're, you know, it's exciting to have them out in all these different places. And and I'm gonna, I'm just going to sort of uh, do a quick sidetrack on that. If you go through ACX, you're not getting them out in a whole lot of places. You're getting them out in I, at Audible and iTunes. So, so that is kind of your worst option because it's so limiting. The problem is, though, and, and has been, that we do all the work. We bear all the creative inner, you know, work. Uh, we do all the, uh, all, all the costs of editing and publishing and then the cost of the audiobook production. And then we, we submit it for distribution and it's out there in the world and we sell audiobooks. And what we get back is this little tiny sliver of the sales price. We don't even get to control the sale price. And if we want to, you know, increase that, we want to do some marketing. You can't do discount codes. You can't run a promotion you, because you don't have any control. And let's say you know that somebody's bought your audiobook. You don't know who, but, you know, somebody out there ha has bought it and you really wish that you could, like, maybe ask them for a review or ask them how they liked it or let them know that book two is coming out. You can't do that because all of that information is hidden and is going to stay hidden because that is the most valuable information to all the retailers, right? So it's always felt terribly unjust and, and backwards to me. Like the whole model for distribution is upside down. And this is why we, we created Amplify Audiobooks is so that we could turn that model around. So with it, you have, as an author, you have a vendor dashboard where you have direct access to your metadata. You can change your price anytime you want. You can run a promotion. Let's say you've got an event. You can run a promotion for that or 
or um, you want to create a coupon code. You want to maybe give some copies away for to ask for reviews or to friends, or maybe you are doing an event and you want to give them a special deal. You have the capacity to do all of that. And when somebody buys your audiobook through Amplify Audiobooks, you actually know who they are. You have their email address. You can reach out to them. You you know, you're always going to be, as always, and I, you know, from the listener perspective, we're, we're never wanting to spam anyone, right? That's not the point. The point is, though, we're building community. An author is always trying to, you know, build their following, build their community. And if we have no way to know who they are, how can we do that? We're just shooting in the dark, throwing stuff out on social media and hoping that it will work. When we're directing people, let's say we put out our social media posts or we send out an email to our list and we're sending them to the Amplify Audiobooks page where your audiobook is and it's in the context of a store so that when other authors send their listeners to the store, they're going to also see your book because, you know, if you're, especially if you're in the same genre, you're a lot more discoverable and you just have a lot more control. And then in terms of the royalties, so typically what it works out, Audible says, uh, or ACX says, 40% if you go exclusive, because of course, that's what they want. 25% if you go non-exclusive. But what they don't say is, 40% of what? 25% of what? And that's a question we don't tend to think to ask because we assume that they mean of whatever they sell it for. But that's not what it is. It's of what they consider their net. And so they have this whole very convoluted formula that they don't share with us about what the actual is. And so they're out there selling their subscriptions, sometimes even giving away your audiobook as a teaser to be a subscriber. If they give your audiobook away, you don't have control over that. You can't say, no, don't do that. And you're not going to get paid anything for it. They will because they got a subscriber, but you won't because your book was the teaser. This feels so incredibly unjust, right? It's so unfair. And so what ends up, the, you know, their formula, it, it ends up working out closer to like zero to 10% than a true 40% or 25%. With Amplify Audiobooks, you get 65% of the gross that you choose to sell it for. And that is way, way, way more than you're going to get from any other, from any retail platform. Because it, this is an author direct sale platform. I think we're bringing all that up because I never knew. So you answered some questions I've always wondered because I've always wondered why I've never seen audiobooks go on sale. I've always wondered why a lot of my authors don't offer that. Mm -hmm. I'm in a couple of groups where I read their arcs and that's always been the number one question. Hey, is this book going to be audio? Can I get an audio book? Yeah. Um, so I was like, yeah, why don't we offer, offer an audio book? For someone like me, it would help me tremendously because I read a ton of books in a year because I want to read them before my authors come on the show and know what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so now as you bring that up, I understand why a lot of them have said, man, if you understood the cost and the return on the investment of that, yeah. you wouldn't know why I don't have an audio book. Yeah. Um, I do have an author who's going to come back on the show. I don't know if you heard of her. Her name is Kirsten Modulin. She's one of the number one best-selling Amazon thriller writers. And she just started audiobooks. So today after this, I'm right here and say, hey, you may want to check out Amplify because this is what I just learned over the last hour. Yeah. What makes Amplify affordable for the author to publish with you? Yeah. Um, I actually want to tie in another thing that we talked about earlier when you were talking about AI. The idea that, oh, okay, well, we can use AI because it makes it cheaper for authors to produce an audiobook. Okay, cheaper, but that doesn't mean that we're going to get listeners who actually want to listen to them, right, as AI. But here's the thing. From my perspective, the formula that they're, they're still using the same model of, okay, you're going to pay less, but... We're still going to keep, you know, the vast majority of the sales price. 
what about a different approach was what I was thinking. Well, why don't we make it so that we actually, as authors, can earn a return on our investment? So, you know, yes, it's going to cost something to get it produced. It doesn't have to be an arm and a leg. But we're going to be able to get that back because when we sell an audiobook, we're actually going to have, you know, we get to set the price. We get to get most of that chunk of the sales price. And, and that's just a very different way of approaching that same that same question. Did I answer that question? Yeah. yeah <laughs> Suddenly I felt like, wait a minute, wait, did I go off sideways? <laughs> Uh, the people who want to narrate for Amplify, do they narrate or apply directly to your app or how do you find your narrators? Uh, yeah, if you go to proaudiovoices.com in the contact us, there is a drop down for how to apply to be a narrator with the Pro Audio Voices team. Now, um, Amplify Audiobooks is open not just to Pro Audio Voices production clients, uh, they're also open to really any author that has an audiobook out there in the world. If they have an exclusive contract with ACX, that would violate the, the an exclusive contact contract. But as long as they're non-exclusive, they can also have it on Amplify Audiobooks. And unfortunately, most of the authors that is doing ACX right now, as you know, is exclusive. That's how they get locked down. I have my own personal problems uh, with Amazon. Um, just as a book publisher, I don't feel like they protect their authors like they should. Uh, I mentioned Kirsten Moslin. She's been hacked before. She's had her books spoofed before. Um, and they didn't do, they took their time. Also, I don't agree with, I can have your book for seven days and then just return it. So if I can read it in seven days, I return your book and you give me all my money back. I can't do that with the video game or anything else I'll walk into a Best Buy. Right. So you shouldn't be able to do that to an author who's depending on that money and that livelihood to take care of their family. I talked to a number of independent authors. They are the breadwinner. Their husband or wife don't work. Their kids depend on that. So I have my own personal issues. So anything that I can get people away from that, I'm always grateful to do so. Yeah. I, you know, that's a, it. There's a, been for many years, you know, the whole uh, audible gate is is uh, it's sort of a movement to try to uh, impact Amazon and their practices that were maybe great for listeners, but brutal to the content creators. So, you know, as authors, their policy used to be that they would have a full year that someone could listen to an audiobook and then decide that for whatever reason they wanted to return it. Then Audible would take back the royalties that they paid out to the author. They actually, they, they take them back. And then they'll, you know, the, but the thing is, it doesn't hurt Amazon any because they're just still collecting their subscription fees. And, and it's, uh, it all comes out of the pockets of the authors. and. Yeah, it's not right. It's not right. And that's just one of one of many practices that have been um uh, there's been some progress um in terms of an impact getting them to, like they they shortened that window, but it's still a problem. So are you marketing amplify audiobooks say like to publishers or some indie people saying, "Hey, while you're producing your new book, you should be also looking at audiobooks. See what we can do for you. You guys doing anything like that? We are, yeah. We're real. We're in the middle of a PR campaign right now, and then and we have. Uh, we're just applying right now uh, with IBPA, Independent Book Publishers Association, to make it a member benefit, as well as a couple other organizations in terms of the member benefit piece. There is a setup fee for Amplify audiobooks, and that's where that member benefit would kick in. I know that. Yes, you can put your audiobook out to to Audible, for example, and not pay a setup fee. But they're going to take their fees, they are taking their fees through royalties for the lifetime of your audiobook. With a setup fee, you're quickly going to be able to recoup that with your high high royalties. And you're going to have those high royalties 
you know, that and, you know, throughout the life of that on Amplify audiobooks. Yeah, we're we're putting out the word as as big and as you know, we're being as noisy about it as we can. Uh, we really want our authors to know because we are disrupting the industry. We are, you know, being the rebels and, and trying to put the control back in the hands of the authors. I've been president of Bay Area Independent Publishers Association for about 10 years now. So I really get how hard it can be as an indie author. Uh, it's convoluted. And we have things like those those claims for the percentages we earn without the transparency or clarification of what that actually means. That's just rampant, you know, in the indie publishing. So wherever we can be helpful, clearer, give a better deal, you know, be more supportive, that's where we want to be. That's what we want to do. Are you considering doing any type of affiliate type program to help get the word out through like things like this, like podcasts and things of that nature? We actually do have an, yes, it is set up as an affiliate. So um, I'll make sure I get you that information as well. If you reach out to us at proaudiovoices.com, uh, admin at proaudiovoices.com would be the simplest way probably to get that link out to whoever is interested. Well, I don't like to promote a lot of things. If you ever get to know me over five years, I'm really particular where I put my name behind. But I want to promote this. I, I've looked through everything before you came on the show. And I was like, if this is real, this is a total life changer when it comes to books and to audio books, especially because I would love every book I read to be audio books. So I have that option. Uh, so when I'm on the go, I can keep up with that. I don't know if Amplify does, but do you see down the line that there'd be technology built to where we can actually mark an audiobook? Like if there's a phrase we want, we can actually have a clip that was stored somewhere we can go back to it. Yes, it's actually uh, it's on our list for the next level upgrade that we do when we. Um, so right now what we have out there is is kind of our minimum viable product. You know, it's it's a it's well functioning listening app. But we, there are a lot of things that we want to do. Uh, so bookmarking, like setting your own bookmarks, is one of those those options that we're, we'll have in the next iteration. So how do we get a hold of Amplify Audiobooks as a consumer and as an author? Yeah. Uh, uh, one way is to go to AmplifyAudiobooks.com. Uh, that will actually take you to the store. So that's a real fast and easy way for listeners to find it. If you go to proaudiovoices.com and uh, click on the distribution link where you'll see it says Amplify, you can get more information as an author and how it works for you as authors. And, uh, and, and there's also a link there for listeners who just want to understand better w why, you know, this is a, a good choice for listeners. Because I think I think we all want to have an impact in the world. We want to make a difference. And a lot of the buy local, buy direct, this fits right into that that movement of um, keeping the, the, the money and the control where it belongs with the creators. Well, I thank God for people like you. Alex Sanfilippo is another one I use. He is the owner of Pod Pros. He has tools for podcasters that are reasonably priced that's not gouging us and everything he's offering, we need, you know, a way to get guests, which I found you on, a way to keep track of what we're doing. And when I met the guy, you know, sometimes you see these people they're like, yeah, we want to do this, but you meet them and they're a whole different cat, right? So they're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. They're, we really want the money. And he's like you. He's everything that he says that he is. And he really wants to help out. So people like you is what makes this industry strong. It what makes authors want to partake in these things. And I will do whatever I can from my end to help spread that word for you. So I totally, totally appreciate it, man. This oh, is this you, is David. awesome. Thank you. Really appreciate that. Yeah, it's uh, definitely uh, a mission of passion. So let's pivot. I'll let everybody know how you can get a hold at the end of GIN if you want to go check out Amplify for audiobooks. But I can't let you get out of here without talking a little bit about your own book, the Left Turn, which I'm assuming it is an audiobook too as well. Uh, it is, yes. In fact, it uh, released it first as audio. <laughs> so what can you tell us about The Left Turn? 
Well, you know, um, it's it's a story that really, uh, in some ways, is it's like taking a lot of the things that I have found really exciting about frontier science, you know, the things that we're learning about consciousness and quantum physics and all this really fascinating stuff and bringing it into a context of somebody, uh, characters who aren't really, you know, that all just looks like woo-woo stuff. <laughs> and then, you know, they split off into this, into these parallel, uh, universes and start to discover things about themselves and about life in ways that, that really transform who they are in the world. Yeah. So it's, um, it's a personal journey, um, personal development in the context of parallel universes. So who do you think is going to enjoy this book? What's your, what's your listener base and your reader base for this? Yeah, I think people who, that enjoy things like magical realism, you know, that's that's a really good uh, target genre. For people even who just enjoy uh, like fiction versions, things like um, The Alchemist, you know, if you if you've read or listened to The Alchemist, you know, that's uh, very in line with this kind of content. But mine is much more uh, contemporary fiction than um, than that is. There are a lot of people writing in this um, realm of uh, it, it's sci-fi, fantasy uh, realm, but still like contemporary in terms of the context. <laughs> I'm not sure if I've described it very well. <laughs> well, actually this then, it says that this, that the left turn is the first book in the Split Universe series. Uh, when are your, is your next book going to come out and what can we look forward to going forward in the series? Yeah, I'm. Uh, my intention is to release it next year, uh, the second book. And... In this, uh, in the first book, the two characters uh, that are a couple, they um, they shift into universes where they are not together. Uh, essentially, what I'm going to be doing in the second book is turning that around and seeing it from the other side, seeing what happens going the other direction, because it gives me a way to explore their their personal development uh, in the context of being as individuals, as single people, and uh, as opposed to, and the, the other one, the one that's coming up, we'll be able to explore a little bit more of uh, what it's like in the context of relationship. And then some other things that will also, uh, there'll be a little bit more about how we perceive and deal with death in the second one as well. That's a good one, because unfortunately, a lot of that has been going around the last couple of years. <laughs> yeah. So, well, I will be definitely listening to The Left Turn, and I would love to have you come back on and we can have a full-fledged discussion about the book once I'm done with that, if you'd like to do that. Oh, I'd love to. That'd be great. And the one thing I forgot to ask you, going back to Amplify, people's going to kill me. I got to ask this. Is the Amplify app integratable with things like Apple CarPlay and, uh, and uh, Android CarPlay? It is an app of it, like it is an app in the i iPhone store, and it's an app in the Google Play store. So uh, hopefully that answers your question. Yeah. So yeah, yeah it will work that way because long as it's on the phone, it yeah. will give us on our dashboard. So yeah, that answers it. Yeah, cool. So yeah. I know a lot of my stuff I'm driving. I deal with my screen in my car, so I can't wait to uh, to try out Amplify for audiobooks. So in closing, Becky, is there anything? you would like to say, what would you like people to take away from our discussion about Amplify audiobooks as well as the left turn? Uh, I think the, the main thing I would like to encourage people to do is, is just uh, check out Amplify audiobooks, you know, be a part of the movement because that is, we're, we're trying to shift the way that business is being done in the audiobook world. So this is our niche. So that's where we're working on this problem. I, I feel like the current model of putting your audiobooks out into retail situations where you don't get much back is just not sustainable and not optimal. So be part of the movement. Join us where you can, you know, as whether it's as a listener, as an author, as both. Um, that's 
That's what I would ask. Yeah. Well, Becky, I thank you for coming on the show. It has definitely been an enlightening conversation. You did not disappoint. I've learned a lot of stuff. I did not know about audiobooks in the world around that. Uh, I look forward to having you come back here soon in the future. And so I do thank you for coming on today. Thank you so much. Great being here, David. Thank you. All right, guys, that was the incredible Becky Parker Geist. We need to help her get this word out. So you can go check out Amplify Audiobooks at AmplifyAudioBooks.com as well as ProAudioBooks.com. Authors and listeners can go to either one of those and she will hook you up with how you can get started. Her own book, The Left Turn, can be published on her website at BeckyParkerGeist.com. And if you are an Amazon reader, you can pick it up there as well. So once again, I thank you for coming on. I hope you guys learned something. All of you guys with audiobooks, this is the place to go. Let's get her up there to number one. So I thank you for coming on or listening today. I know you have many choices in podcasts. I'm glad I'm one of them. Hope you're being cool and safe. And always remember, always stay humble. An act of kindness can make someone's day. A little love and compassion can go a long way. And remember that there is an extraordinary person in all of us. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Join us on social media. One link to the link tree has it all. Feel free to drop us a line at truecrimeandauthors at gmail.com. Cover art and logo designed by Arslan. Sound mixing and editing by David McClam. Intro script by Sophie Wilde and David McClam. Theme music, Legendary, by New Alchemist. Introduction and ending credits by Jackie Voice. See you next time on True Crime, Authors, and Extraordinary People.